Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch and Carry. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a quick mod on a Casio. It's actually been quite a while since I've uh, filmed a uh, modification video for the Casio uh, World Timeline. And uh, I just saw a great sale going on on one of the uh, models for the World Time and said, hey, let's go ahead and order one and uh, let's film a mod today. So this is what we're going to be uh, making. Now this one I already have. I actually uh, gave this uh, to a friend for a birthday gift, uh, but essentially we are taking uh, a watch uh, from the Casio World Time model and then we're taking a stainless steel bracelet which comes from a completely different brand. So things you're going to need here, you're obviously going to need the watch. Uh, the one you want to order is the uh, World Time. Let's see if I can find that model number for you. All right, so uh, this is the one off of Amazon. Got a great price on this right now at $15.88. And uh, this is the one you want to look for. It's got the world map, the analog, and the digital clock. And I believe the model number should be listed here uh, somewhere. There we go. So right there, AE1200WH-1A. And then for the stainless steel bracelet, because the one that comes with this watch is a rubber or silicone, you're gonna have to order uh, this watch. And uh, this is about the same price, $13.99. This is, uh, says Uten, but this is actually a company called Schemi or Skimai. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Uh, not quite sure if it's an homage or a blatant ripoff of the uh, world time, but you can kind of see just how similar uh, these two watches are. Uh, the quality is obviously a little bit uh, better on the Casio, but with the Skimai or the Schemi, what you're getting here is not just the watch, but you're getting a stainless steel bracelet. And so I've already ordered that. And this is what that bracelet looks like. And I kind of thought adding a stainless steel bracelet uh, to this would kind of, you know, add a little bit of weight, which kind of makes it feel a little bit more quality and kind of makes it stand out, makes it feel less like a recreational watch and maybe more like something you might want to dress up. All right, uh, other materials that you're going to be needing for this uh, project, uh, some Q-tips to spread the uh, super glue, uh, super glue, of course, your lug removal tool, uh, Sharpie, not required, but it does help. Uh, micro screwdriver to remove the screws on that case back. Uh, again, not required, but for me, it helps to take out the dust before I close up the case. I just have this uh, air blaster here. And then a soft work mat. Uh, the, I'm wearing a, another Casio AE line here and the plastic or the resin that comes on these faces from the factory is very, very soft. So just make sure you're working on something soft so it doesn't scratch it. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and, uh, oh, before I get started, most importantly, you're also going to be needing your filters. So, uh, Lee filters is the brand that I use. I chose to buy their sample pack off of, I think eBay. This whole thing cost me about five bucks. I chose this because, uh, months ago when I first started modding, I didn't know which colors I wanted and I didn't want to purchase a whole big sheet of a certain color and then be disappointed and waste it. So I bought a sample pack and you can see here, I just kind of cut different colors, play around with it. And then when I see what I like, I'll go ahead and look at the name and the code, uh, either order online or through the phone and order a bigger sheet of that from Lee filters, but love Lee filters. They've been doing a good job here. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to go to take our watch here. Okay, first thing we're going to do is undo the uh, case back. So you've got uh, four screws here in the back. And I apologize if I'm sniffing here throughout the video, I have a little bit of a cold, so. Just getting over it right now. Okay, so we've got our screws out. Also kind of nice to have this work mat with these little organization bins. We'll take that case back off, set that to the side up there, and we'll take our lug removal tool, 
kind of pry up on that. And then the only thing I want to focus on right now is that um, masking, which is what this is in my right hand. As you're lifting out, just be careful you're not scratching the inside resin of that very fragile uh, glass. To prevent dust and other stuff from getting in there, I kind of tuck the watch module back into the case, and then I'll go ahead and uh, just set that guy to the side. Okay, so now let's focus here on our filters. So we'll zoom in for that, and... Um, I'm going to be uh, using the design uh, that I just showed you earlier. This design, by the way, I forgot to mention, is, is not my own. This is off of a uh, fellow Instagrammer. Uh, his uh, handle is Hitmix. I think you spell it H-I-T-M-I-C-C-S. And uh, this guy is a very nice guy. I think he's, he lives in Germany. Uh, he modifies and sells uh, a lot of Casio watches and uh, this was one of his most popular designs that uh, really took um, a lot of Casio followers on Instagram by storm and they ordered uh, dozens or hundreds from him. So he's been modifying uh, Casios of a different line, the silver model with the stainless steel bracelet with this orange, yellow and green insert now for a few years. And it's just a really beautiful, simple, fantastic design that really kind of lets the watch pop, but at the same time keeps it a little bit subtle. So at Hitmix, I would recommend giving his uh, page a look at for some other great photos and modding ideas. Okay, so what I like to do here when I'm starting is we're gonna put orange up here. So let's find the orange. And I've got several oranges here, but I'm gonna look for the one I use last. Now, this looks a little bit too amber, so I kinda like this orange right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I take my masking and I flip it over, and this is where the Sharpie comes in handy. So that way you don't cut and waste too much. What I do is I press that border of the filter and that border all the way into the borders or the corners of the masking like that. So that way it's kind of flush, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'll just draw a small outline here which is where I will cut. And then another one here to kind of chop off this corner that's uh, extending a little bit out, okay? So now we can put that to the side. Another thing I forgot to mention, you're gonna need a pair of scissors. So I have my um, Victorinox uh, Super Tinker here. All right, and let's uh, go ahead and cut this filter out. Okay, so this is our filter. Let's find those Sharpie marks that we uh, drew and let's cut those things out. Okay, and then clean that up a little bit like that. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just uh, test fit it. I am forgetting a lot of stuff here. Another thing I like to use are uh, tweezers, so plastic tweezers here to just kind of manipulate the filter so that way you kind of limit the amount of fingerprint oil you're putting on your filter. You can always clean it off, but you know, if you don't put them in the first place, it makes it easier to do the project. So that looks like a good size. So I'm checking to make sure that this filter is not extending beyond these uh, these inserts here so it doesn't like, you know, quote unquote, bleed into the other uh, other windows of the watch. So that looks good. I'll go ahead and set that guy to the side. Next, we're going to focus on the top here. And so looking at the design I posted earlier, uh, we're going to put yellow up there. So let's find yellow now. Yellow might have been at the beginning. No, that's green. That's too much yellow. That's almost like a highlighter yellow, fluorescent yellow. That looks pretty good. 
I don't know, there's deep amber. I think the deep amber is a little bit too close to the orange. I, I kind of like the yellow going with the light amber instead. So uh, let's go with light amber there. Unless I have a better yellow to use. No, that's okay. Just to save on time, let's use the light amber. Again, we're gonna take our masking. You're gonna put that underneath. Okay, we're going to press it all the way to the top of that masking so it's flush. And then we're going to outline where we're going to cut. So got to be a little steady here. Okay, like that. And then we'll cut this out. Perfect. Set that to the side, clean this up just a bit. Okay, looks good. And then we'll take our masking back and double check and see how this fits. Okay, that fits pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna cut off that little corner right there that's gonna be eating into the watch case so I can Draw a Sharpie mark right there. Okay. Now, if you look here, uh, let me zoom in a bit. You'll notice how I really have like a fat end here. Uh, that seems unnecessary because this part is being blocked by the masking. So why make it so fat? Well, in the end, I'm going to be gluing these filters in. If you make these uh, filters just slightly bigger than the opening in the window of the masking. What ends up happening is you have such a small or thin area to apply the glue. And of course, when you squeeze that glue between the filter and the masking, the glue spreads out. And then now what happens is you have glue spreading into the window and you can see it on the watch when you reassemble it. It really looks cloudy. You can see the dried uh, super glue. So by having this really fat uh, piece of the filter on the top. I'm only going to apply the glue here on the top and just at the very top so that way even if I squeeze it and it starts to spread, there's room for it to spread without it going into the window below. So that's why I make it a little bit uh, fatter when I cut those out. So we'll trim that uh, corner there and that guy's good to go. All right, one more color moving along. So we're going to be going to the uh, green next for the map. And let's see what green I've used. So we've got Lee green there. We've got dark green. I kind of like the idea of the dark green with the orange. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think that looks better than the light. Or is that too dark? Yeah, let's go with the, the fern green. I think that might be better. So fern green. All right, same thing again. This is actually the first time I'm using this, uh, this color. Now let me take one more look back here. Oh, actually, you know what? I think this is the one I've used, moss green. That looks a little less fluorescent-y, for lack of a better word, so let's let's use this one. So we're gonna be doing that window there. Okay, again, we're gonna line this up. Now this one's the hardest one to line up because you gotta make sure it's not too large to go into that window. So I'm lining it up just barely in line with that bar right there on the top. And then I'm gonna draw my Sharpie mark here on the bottom. 
and then another one on the top like that. Okay. And then we'll uh, go ahead and cut this guy out. And we'll touch this guy up. Okay, let's uh, test fit it. Oops. These filters love to kind of spring and jump all over the place, so. Okay, settle down, settle down. Okay, so this is an exact reason why I want to test fit it. Look at that. You see how that filter is barely larger than that window? I don't have any room to glue there. The glue is going to bleed into the window, right? So that's garbage. So we're going to do this one more time. I cut it way too short. So let's do this again. Okay, doesn't look even, so we'll line up these edges to make it a little bit more even. Okay, before I cut more, let's uh, test fit it again. Okay, perfect. Great. So... You see here how I have a good fat end here on the right and then another on the left. I can glue either of those sides or one of those sides and now I have room for that glue to kind of spread without it bleeding into the uh, visible area. So that looks good. So we'll set that to the side. Okay, that's actually the hardest part I think is measuring and cutting or the most tedious part. Um, the rest of this is pretty easy. Okay, now before we move on to the glue, Another thing that I forgot to tell you guys, uh, microfiber towel, preferably clean. Go ahead and give these filters a nice uh, wipe off of your fingerprints, both sides. And then what I like to do is once you're done, take your tweezers and set that to the side. Like that. Okay. And then the same thing here. Now, if you really want to be nerdy about this, look at the way I laid out my filters. I have a little edge here, which makes it easy to grab with my tweezers. And because my uh, masking will be laying down like this, the filters are oriented so that I just grab it and put it down. I don't have to grab it and then turn it, you know, in one direction or the other. The reason why I like to move fast is because you're going to be having super glue. Super glue dries really quick. And if you don't move fast enough, you're going to have to apply another layer of super glue. And then pretty soon you're going to have all of this crusty super glue building up and the filter is not going to sit flat anymore. So, you know, a little bit of speed helps. Now to kind of slow down the um, drying of the super glue, I like to use tin foil rather than, you know, like a napkin or something like that. So tin foil works pretty great. The super glue should stay, you know, um, stay uh, malleable, uh, if that's what you want to call it for, you know, a few minutes. So we'll squirt in just a little bit because we can always add more. Okay. And then we will take our Q-tips here. And what I like to do is just apply the uh, analog clock first. And again, what I like to do is focus at the uh, very top corner. So right here at the top, 
and all the way to the edge. Don't go too close to the opening because the glue will bleed into that, so to speak. So just a small dab here on the top. Another one here on the edge. Okay, so it looks like there's too much, like too close here. I'll take the other end of my Q-tip and wipe off that extra. All right, that looks good. Let's grab our orange filter. And we'll just set that guy down. And put him into place. Come on now. Get in there. Okay. And then once that looks like it's in place, you can take the back of your uh, of your uh, tweezers and just kind of press the uh, top edge of the uh, area where you applied glue. Okay. Kind of like that. All right, um, I think this could use a little bit more on the edge. So now what I'll do is I'll just go to the very edge here and I'll dab it uh, halfway between the filter and the masking. So it's almost like a little like a, like a little rivet that's kind of keeping that in place. And I'm not going to spread it. I'm just going to dab it and leave it. Okay, and then I'll do another one here on this side like that. Okay, and then maybe one more here on the bottom like that. Okay, and uh, that should provide ample holding for that filter. So we got one done. Uh, let's go ahead and put a little bit more glue in. And we'll do the uh, top yellow, which is where you would have your alarm indicator. Okay, so again, by the way, it really helps to have these really thin Q-tips. It's, it's a lot easier to apply a fine streak of glue. So here to the top. Oh, that came out perfect. And then grab our filter. And put that guy down. Push it all the way to the corners, left and to the top. And then once you feel like it's in place, Yep, then we'll push this guy down. Perfect. And then I will apply another rivet of glue between the orange and the yellow right here at the top. Just one dab there. Okay, and then maybe one more dab here between the yellow and the masking. There we go. Great. All right, one more to go. So we're going to be doing the green next. Switch out my Q-tip here for a fresh one. So we're going to be applying our glue here to the uh, left side only. Okay, it looks pretty good. Grab our filter. Oh, that was the easiest one yet. Perfect. And then push that down. Great. Okay. Then what I want to do is uh, secure it a little bit more, just a tiny bit more glue. So maybe one here between the orange and the green. A little rivet of glue. Another one here at the bottom. And then one more maybe here at the top. Okay. Yeah, maybe one more here. <laughs> Lots of glue. Perfect. I'm gonna let that sit. I don't wanna press that right away because the glue is still drying. But uh, that is basically your hard part. So we flip this guy over and let's take a look at the preliminary job. So those are the filters now. Okay, kinda cool.
At this point, if uh, you are familiar with removing labels, what you can do is uh, you can do it before you do the filter work is remove these labels. And uh, some people have asked me, how do you remove the lettering? Uh, this is the chemical you're going to be uh, using. It's called Goo Gone. Uh, nothing to mix here. You just pour this into a bowl. Again, take some Q-tips and you rub it on the letter that you want uh, pretty vigorously. It, it takes a few minutes. Some of the letterings remove easier than others. Uh, but that's what you would do if you want to keep this, you know, naked, so to speak. And also if you ever wanted to remove the letterings here on the case. So Goo Gone is a secret there for me. Uh, I kind of like to have the lettering on it. it. makes it look a little bit more retro. So we will set this guy to the side there. And then now we're going to prep our watch case here. What I want to do is before I close this up, I want to make sure that no dust has gotten in here because it becomes very, very visible when you have colored filters. So dust usually hides well here with the typical basic watch, but once you add colored filters, it's very, very easy to see. So we'll go ahead and pry uh, the back of this case open. Okay. Be careful not to touch that part as much as you can. If you do, go ahead and grab a microfiber and give it a little wipe down. And then this is where I take my air can here and then I just kind of spray it in one direction. All right. Okay, so now I know that that is clear of dust. And what I'll do is I will take, um, put that face down so that dust doesn't get into that. I will take uh, my dried up uh, masking now so the glue should be dried here. And then this is where it gets a little tricky. Be very gentle with the trigger. I just kind of want to give this a little touch up here. Take out just a little bit of the dust. So that's it. Very light. And then the other side also. Okay, now I'm going to check my filters to make sure I don't have any major fingerprints on it. I can already kind of see one here on the orange. So something you can do there is take a brand new Q-tip and uh, go to the back if that's where it is and kind of roll the Q-tip to take it out. Uh, if it's on this side, be very careful because you don't want to push that filter down and you can kind of maybe support it in the back with a uh, microfiber and then push there, kind of remove any fingerprints that you might be seeing there as well. Okay, and that looks to do the job. I can see a little bit more here on the yellow as well. And green looks good enough. Okay. So that looks pretty good to me. Okay, as you're cleaning the back here, be careful not to touch the Q-tip to the glue that you dab because then you'll have some hairs that get stuck from the Q-tip. And then when you put the masking back in the watch, it'll be visible. Okay, one more time, a little spray with the air. And one more on this side. Okay, great. And then what we'll do is we'll try to do this as quickly as possible. Make sure you're in the right orientation. So the world time should be on the top and the world time is the 12 o'clock position. The yellow and the, and the orange are the 12 o'clock position. Okay, so we'll flip this guy over, put our masking in, make sure that it's pretty flush. Okay, take our watch module Push this guy in. So now we don't really have any way for dust to get in there. We can kind of relax. Now what you want to do is you focus on these little tongues here. So one, two, three, and four. These tongues, what happens is as you press the four buttons on the outside, the pusher hits the tongue and then the tongue hits and interacts with the watch module. So if this tongue is not set properly, uh, your buttons won't work. So what you need to do is usually what happens is the pusher right here extends all the way in like a barrel. And as you were reinserting this module, the tongue tends to uh, ride on top of it, on top of that barrel. But what we need that tongue to do is be behind it. So what I like to do is just kind of push here with my thumb on my left and then pull back on the tongue. So watch this tongue here, kind of like that. Okay, we'll do it one more time here. 
Perfect. You can hear that, uh, that little click. And now you can see here that the tongue is here. And the pusher, the end of that pusher is above that, which is where it should be. And then we'll check the other side as well. Listen for the click. And then this one looks like it's all set on this side as well. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now, if you are um, working on an older Casio that maybe you've had for a while now, it may be time to uh, oil up that uh, gasket. This is a brand new watch, so I'm not going to do that. But uh, the solution that you want to use or the chemical is just any kind of lubricating oil. Uh, don't use 409 40, or don't use WD-40. Uh, WD stands for water displacement. It's meant to keep water out, which yes, a seal should be doing, but it doesn't really lubricate as well as traditional oil. So I'm just using my traditional lubricating oil here, rub it between your fingers and go all over that gasket, clean off the extra. And then when it comes time to reinstalling this O-ring, you look here at the 12 o'clock position, there's a little indentation there. You see that, that little bump that's going to go here at the 12 o'clock position for the watch. Okay, and then make sure that that O-ring is sitting perfectly flush. That looks great. Okay, again, case back, the word Casio here should be legible from uh, top to bottom, meaning 12 o'clock here, the word Casio is in this orientation here. Okay, we'll put that back. Take our four screws uh, here in the corner and reinsert everything. Perfect. Okay. Take our screwdriver again, push down on that case. Loosely tighten. Alternate your screws. And then before we fully tighten, lift it up a little bit, go over the entire case back between the silver and the black, make sure that that O-ring is not sticking out. Okay, that looks good. And then now we can fully tighten. Be careful fully tightening this because you are screwing uh, what feels like metal screws into a plastic body. So it's very easy to strip the uh, threads in the plastic body. So very, very light. Okay, and voila. So we are almost there. That looks great, right? Kind of pops, I think, a little bit better than on the uh, silver stainless steel world time. Let's get this bracelet off. So take our lug removal tool. Very easy with these Casio straps. Save your 18 millimeter uh, lug uh, spring, spring bar. Take that guy out. Okay, now we're gonna take our skimai or skimi bracelet. I'm gonna take off my watch that I'm wearing. Set that guy to the side. And then what I like to do before I insert it is how do I like to remove this? Do I remove it in this direction? or do I remove it in this direction? So for me, left-handed, I like to remove it here, which means that this part will go to my six o'clock. So that's how I find my six o'clock position. Verify that on the watch. We'll go ahead and insert our spring bar into there. Uh, rest the spring bar inside one of the holes first, and then take your lug tool and push in the other. Oh, that one jumped a little bit one more time. There we go. And then give it a small jiggle to make sure it's really in there. Switch it over. Insert the spring bar. Put that first end in, doesn't really matter which one you do, and then push the other one in with your spring bar tool. Give it a little jiggle. And there we go, that looks great. Not too bad, 35 minutes. 
Uh, you can probably go quicker uh, if you're not video, uh, if you're not recording. And let's check our functions is what I like to do, especially if, if this was something I was going to sell a customer. I don't sell this design because it's not mine, but the ones I do sell, I like to run through all the functions. So that works good. Timer, clear, and how about that light? Light works great. So that means that our pushers are working well with those little tongues that we adjusted. Let's put this guy on the uh, wrist and see how it wears. Awesome, I really love this. It's really, really cheap, not too uh, difficult to do. I'd say maybe just shy of $30 if you have to buy both watches. Uh, filters, again, that's about five bucks. So you're looking at about anywhere from 25 to $35 to have this mod uh, done. But the Lee filters will last you for a while for many, many mods to come. And uh, that's kind of how it looks there. And I think that looks a whole lot better than these rubber straps, which are really great straps, but kind of looks more for a wreck. This looks more serious, a little bit more mean. Let's take it out and kind of show it to you a little bit more. Yeah, really like those shades of green, yellow, and orange that I chose. Now the Skimai bracelet is not as high quality stainless steel as the stainless steel that you get on the Casio World Time. That's a much, much better stainless steel bracelet, but Casio only makes that in silver. You can get this in gold and you can also get this in black as you can see here. So a little, a little more options, a few more options with Skimai. Looks really great. Let's take a look at that, uh, that light. So the main window still shows up yellow, the orange shows up yellow, the yellow obviously shows up yellow, and the green is just barely visible, right? So it's going to affect your nighttime viewing a little bit uh, for the map and the analog clock, but your main time window, because that's untouched, will look just fine. Other things I like to look for, especially if, let's say, this is something I'm sending out to a customer, I want to make sure that these filters are not bleeding into each other. I don't want to see any yellow here in the green. I don't want to see any orange in the green. I don't want to see any green here in the main time display. So I'll go from different angles just to make sure that those filters were cut perfectly. All right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Uh, a little bit long, 37 minutes, but again, not too uh, long, not too difficult, and not too expensive to have a little bit of fun and make your own cool Casio watch, something that will stand out in a crowd and, you know, for me at least puts a smile on my face. If you have any other questions, uh, please put them down below. Uh, any other mod ideas, I always welcome them. Please also put those down below. And as always, have fun, and I'll see you guys on the next one.